Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be testing out brand new makeup and some of these products are so gorgeous. I can't wait for you to see them. Also, um, just to address the elephant in the room, I am in a different space. This is my guest bedroom and I have filmed in here before in the past. Um, I don't know if this is gonna become a permanent thing, but I just felt like switching it up a little bit. So that's why I'm over here for now. But if you guys like this space, I can always just continue to film here. But I really love this room. It just has such a Cozy vibe to it. So um, anyway, if you're new here, hi, my name is Jen. I do a lot of makeup reviews here on this channel focused on drugstore and more affordable makeup. And all of my videos are also unsponsored. So if that sounds good, be sure to hit the subscribe button and let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. All right, so before we go ahead and get into all of the new and exciting stuff, I just want to apply foundation and concealer. So today I'm going to be using the L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Foundation in the shade C 1.5. And this is one of my favorite formulas. I've been kind of trying to go through my foundation drawer lately because I have way too many and I feel like I need to do another declutter, but I want to do like a really good declutter. I want to try to get it down to maybe like my top five. I'm hoping that I can do that it's just I notice myself like wearing the same formulas over and over again so I'm just trying to use different ones and just kind of figure out what I'm gonna be keeping and if you'd like to see that become a video definitely let me know but anyway it's very gloomy outside I don't know if you can tell from the window but we're actually having a tropical storm right now it's called tropical storm Ophelia and it's pretty windy out there the rain is insane like it's it's been going on for like three days. There's flooding. So I am ready for the sun to come out for sure. All right, next for concealer, I'm going to be using the Flower Beauty Get Real Serum Concealer. I used this in my last video and I compared it to the House Labs Concealer and I like this one even better and I forgot how much I really love this formula. So I've been using it again a lot ever since that video. So I'm just going to put couple dots at the outer edge, one on the inner corner, and we'll just start blending this in. It has such good coverage, but it's like a really thin weightless formula and it dries down quickly. So I feel like on me at least it doesn't crease at all. Oh my gosh. So I have to tell you this really funny story that happened this morning. So this sweater, I got this recently. I'll link it down below in case you're interested. But when we were leaving the house, my son who's 10 was like, mom, you look like a teenager in that outfit. And I was like, really? Wow, a teenager. And then he kind of stopped for a second and he's like, well, maybe somebody in their 20s. And I was like, you know what? I'll take it. For those of you who don't know, I'm 45. So yeah, that was a huge compliment. He's so funny. All right, so anyway, I'm just gonna finish this up quickly and then we'll get to the good stuff. Okay, so I just got this PR package in the mail over the weekend and it's from Moira, one of my favorite brands, as you guys know. I opened this up and I was like, cool, new liquid eyeshadows. These are actually called Space Chameleon. So they're supposed to be shifting liquid eyeshadows. And at first I didn't really think too much of it because they do have other liquid eyeshadows. The Diamond Days ones have, a lot of them have a shift to it. So I wasn't really sure how these compare to those, but when I saw these and I swatched them, I could not believe these are gorgeous. They're like, take the Diamond Days eyeshadows and just kick them up a notch. I just couldn't stop staring at these swatches. I had no idea what color I'm gonna wear today. I honestly still don't. And if these are anything like their other liquid eyeshadows, they're not going to crease or budge. They're gonna stay put all day. So I'm really, really excited. I think first though, I wanna put down just some powder shadow because I'm gonna use this as my lid color. So I have the Moira Endless Moonlight Palette that I'm gonna use first. And this is just a really good, solid, neutral palette. It has a lot of cool tone shades in it, but it also has some warm tones. It's a really good mix. And I like to grab this one if I just need a neutral base. So I'm gonna pick up the shade Diva right here, which is a really good crease color. And I'm just gonna start working that into my crease. These shadows are so pigmented, but also very easy to work with. I love Moira's formula, but if you're gonna buy eyeshadows from Moira, just get the ones that are in like these chunkier packages because their older eyeshadows, which are further down on their site, just aren't quite as good. I mean, they're okay, but the newer ones are the ones that really stand out. Then I'm gonna pick up this deeper brown shade down here called Flashy, and I'm just gonna work this into the outer corner. 
All right, so for my lid, I'm gonna use the Space Chameleon eyeshadow in the shade Prima Donna. So this almost looks like it has pink and green. I see maybe like orange or yellow in there. It's a gorgeous multi-chrome. So let's see how it applies. I'm so excited. These look so pretty. I mean, so far the formula feels pretty similar to the Diamond Days eyeshadows, if you've ever tried those. Really beautiful. And I love um, that they're not super liquidy. Sometimes liquid shadows, I put them on and I feel like they have to be blended. And then when I do that, then it ends up kind of lifting up the product. But with these, I feel like I can just draw it on with the applicator and kind of leave it alone for the most part. It's more of like a moussey kind of a texture, I guess. All right, so what do you guys think? I love this. I think the color is so pretty. It applied really easily. I think if you are kind of like nervous about liquid shadows because you don't know how to apply them, these are just really simple. You really just have to slick it on with the applicator. It just lays down the perfect amount of color. You really don't have to do that much. So I think these are a pretty foolproof way to get a gorgeous multi-chrome look. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do the other eye and then we'll move on to mess. Mascara. Moving on to mascara, I have a new one from What's Up Beauty. You guys have heard me talk about their Geodes palette quite a lot. They have some really beautiful nail polishes as well, but they have this new mascara and also a new highlighter that I'm gonna be sharing that's like one of the most beautiful highlighters I've ever seen. So um, let's talk about the mascara first. This is called Watch Me. This is made in Italy and also What's Up Beauty is cruelty free. This claims to add volume, length, curl, and definition to your lashes. And and it's designed to hold curl all day with no flaking. It also has a hybrid brush that comes with both twisted wire bristles to load the mascara and then a silicone comb on the other side to define, add length, and curl your lashes. The formula also has biotin, peptides, and panthenol to condition your lashes, which is really nice. It's kind of like a lash serum and mascara in one. And by the way, the packaging is so luxurious. It feels really nice and heavy. Let's see how this goes. I really I really like the brush too because it's like a skinnier wand and that way I feel like I'm not going to be poking myself in the lid and getting mascara everywhere. So I'm just using the wire brush side first like they said just to load the product on and then I'll flip it at the end and use the silicone comb. It feels like somewhat of a drier formula, so it's not globbing product all onto my lashes. It's pretty easy to control how much I use, and it also doesn't seem to be clumpy either, which is really nice. So far, I'm liking it. I would say the one thing that I'm noticing the most about this mascara is that it's giving me tons of length. Like it's really giving me super long lashes and a little bit of volume as well. All right, so here we have one eye versus the other. I think like this definitely gave me really long lashes. And I have to say, I find the brush to be very unique. I know that some of them do have the comb on the other side, but this one just made it super easy to comb through my lashes and really get that fanned out look. So I have to say I'm impressed so far and I normally don't like a mascara on the first pass. It usually has to kind of dry out for a little while, but so far I really, really like this one. So I'm just gonna do the other eye and then we'll just take a look at both. All right, so with both eyes done, I'm really liking the look of this. I feel like it gives me really fluttery lashes. They look really kind of fanned out. And I really like the formula too. It's a drier formula, so I just felt like I could add coats without too much clumping. And even if there was a little bit of clumping, I could just use the comb to make my lashes a little bit more fanned out. So yeah, I really, really like it so far. Next for blush, I'm gonna be using the Stila Convertible Color in the shade Lilium. I showed this in a video a couple of weeks ago and I've just been reaching for it so much. This is one of those hidden gems that not a lot of people really talk about, but it's such a good formula and such a stunning color as well. It's like the perfect pinky nude. I put a little bit too much, so I'm just gonna put some over here. And with cream formulas, I like to do more of a patting motion versus swiping because then it's not gonna disturb your foundation underneath as much. Next up, I have the prettiest highlighter I think I've ever seen. These are also from What's Up Beauty, and these are their Serengeti highlighters. So these are not out just yet. They come out September 29th, so later on this week. And these are talc-free, cruelty-free, vegan. They come in two different shades. And before we even get into the formula of these, 
The packaging is super gorgeous. It's stunning. It feels really nice and heavy and high end. And then when you open the powders themselves, they have this beautiful Serengeti grassland scene. You have a cheetah right up front. And then in the background, you have giraffes and acacia trees. Like it is so beautiful. It's honestly a work of art. And in each one, you get two separate colors that you can use, or you can just mix them together. So I swatched each color out separately and then I'll show what they look like actually blended so that you can see the different variations. And I also want to mention that What's Up Beauty is donating a portion of their sales to the Serengeti Cheetah Project of Tanzania. So I just wanted to mention that as well. So I'm going to be using the Wild Acacia shade and I'm going to be using What's Up Beauty's highlighter brush. By the way, this is made in Japan and it feels absolutely incredible. So I think I'm probably just going to pick up a little of each shade. All right, so let's see. Oh wow, this is so smooth. What a beautiful formula. It felt like very hard pressed into the pan, so I wasn't sure if I was even picking it up on the brush. There's no powder kick up or fallout or anything. It's just, oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. And it's like a really bright beaming highlight. So if you like this really type of bright highlighter, I think you're gonna love this. This formula is just so super smooth. Wow. All right, I'm just gonna add some to the other cheek. I also love that when you dip into the compact, it doesn't destroy the picture at all. And that makes me happy because I didn't even want to use it. Like it's almost too pretty to use, but I'm so glad that even like rubbing the brush in the compact doesn't do anything to it. See, it still looks exactly the same. Okay, so cool, so pretty. Moving on to lips. I actually got a PR package from Catrice and they have some new lip products out. So inside we have some new marbled lip glosses, which look really cool. Also a lip serum. And then down here we have some fruity lip oils. So in a way, these look a lot like the Givenchy Rose Perfecto lip balms. And then I'm kind of thinking these, they might be trying to dupe Dior. I guess let's start with the lip serum first and then we'll get into some of the colors. So this is called the Lip Lovin' Caring Lip Serum. It's eight dollars and it claims to be a nourishing formula for soft lips. It has a serum texture with a glossy finish and it's enriched with caring oils and vitamin E and it also has a brush applicator to apply it with. So I just want to put this on first and kind of see what it's all about. So yeah, it has this little tiny brush. I don't know how much I love that, only because I feel like I have to go back and forth a lot. It's not bad though, and it has this really thin light texture. It feels a lot like a lip oil, and it has a fruity scent, which is very pleasant. It reminds me of something that I had as a kid, like maybe a Bonnie Bell chapstick or something. It smells really good but it does feel very hydrating even though it's so lightweight. I think it has almond oil in it. So I do definitely like the feel of this one, but I'm gonna have to just use it for longer. Next, let's check out those Marbleicious Liquid Lip Balms. So these are $6 each, again, available on Amazon or Catrice's website, and they claim to give glossy shine with a hint of color, long-lasting hydration, comfortable wear, and they're formulated with coconut oil. So just for comparison's sake, I do have my Givenchy Rose Perfecto lip balm. And not only do both of these have the marbled swirly packaging, but even Catrice put this little stripe right here that's like the same color as this cap. So that kind of ties it in just a little bit more, but I'm really curious to see what the formula is like, how much color these have. So why don't I try this one first? This is called Strawless Flawless and it's the darkest shade. And if it seems like these have a lot of pigmentation and there's gonna be a lot of difference between the colors, I'll just try them all on so we can see what they look like. All right, so here's that deepest shade first. Ooh, these have um, like a coconut scent to them. I like that. I know not everybody's going to though. It just makes me think of summer. Okay, so yeah, these do actually have quite a bit of pigmentation. I was not expecting that at all. Like I said, this one is the deepest shade. It's called Strawless Flawless. So I guess I'll just try the other colors and see what they look like. The next one is Swirl It Twirl It, and this one looks red in the tube. It's kind of like a cherry color. Then this one is Don't Be Shaky, which is more of a nude shade. Then we have a light pink called Swirl It, Don't Shake It. This last one is a nude pink and it's called Don't Slurp So Loud. 
So if I had to compare them to the Givenchy Rose Perfecto, I would say uh, the Catrice are thinner in formula. They feel more like a lip oil, while these have that really thick kind of cushiony feel to them. So if you don't like the really thick, heavier lip balms, then you might actually prefer the Catrice one. Like I said, this also smells like coconut and the Givenchy one smells kind of like roses, which I'm not a big fan of. I hate floral scents in lip products. So I much prefer the coconut of the Catrice. And just not even comparing them to anything on their own, these are really nice lip glosses. First of all, they're super cute. They have kind of cute, quirky names, and I really like all the colors. I like that they have a lot of pigmentation to them. So if you're a lip gloss person, I would not hesitate to throw one or more of these into your cart next time you're on Amazon. Next, we have the Gloss & Glow Tinted Lip Oil. So these are $6 each, and they claim to give the shine of a gloss and the benefits of a lip balm, a non-sticky formula. They're also supposed to adapt to your lips pH, and they have a jumbo doe foot applicator. So I don't know if these are sounding familiar to you guys, but to me, they sound an awful lot like the Dior lip glows. So if you look at the packaging up close, obviously the Dior one is way more luxurious looking, but the Dior also has that pH adjusting formula. So these sound like they're going to be super similar. And I do wanna test one out just to try the formula and see if it's similar to the Dior. I'm not gonna try all the colors because I think these really aren't supposed to give a lot of color. It's more like the pH adjusting thing. And usually on me, they all turn some sort of hot pink shade. So this is the shade Keep It Juicy, which looks like a light pink in the tube. And I have to say, it does feel very similar to the Dior. It has that really glossy, shiny finish. It's a very thick formula, like when you press your lips together. At first it kind of feels cushiony, but then as you wear it, it feels a little bit stickier. I'm actually thinking this could be one of the best dupes ever. I know a lot of people say the Milani lip oils are dupes, which those also do feel similar, but they don't have the pH thing going on, and these do. The only thing that for me is different is the scent. So this one, this particular one that I'm wearing smells like watermelon. The Dior Gloss kind of smells like those vanilla Tic Tacs. It's like half vanilla and it's also kind of minty, which I don't mind. It's not the most horrible thing in the world, but I do actually prefer the fruitiness of the Catrice. I'm curious to see if they all smell like this. So let me see. Like this one is called Gloss Up Girl. Yeah they all kind of have that fruity scent. So I don't think there's a difference as far as that goes. I think it's really just the colors and I don't even know how different the colors really are because there are some that look like this, like this yellow one. It's really just gonna adjust to the pH, but the formula itself probably isn't going to affect the color all that much. So anyway, guys, I think we just found a surprise dupe. I wouldn't say that the swirly lip glosses are a Givenchy dupe. They're really not. They don't feel anything alike at all but these lip oils are so close to the Dior. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of these products down below. What are you thinking? What are you planning on picking up or what are you planning to skip? Also, if you have a little bit of extra time and you'd like to watch some more of my videos, I'll go ahead and just put a playlist right up here for you to check out next. And I wanna thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to spend it here with me on my channel. I really, truly appreciate it. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I will see you all in my next video. Take care, guys. Bye.